Hi skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Welcome to episode 10 of our new Top 5 Fridays video series. Um, if you don't normally, head on over and read the written portion or the written version of this too. Um, my esteemed colleague, as I've mentioned before, Matt, uh, he does a fantastic job putting it together and writing it. Um, and he's got a, a great sense of humor, so whether it's a serious topic or a fun one, he usually works in some some pretty uh, pretty entertaining entertaining prose in there, so to speak. Um, so definitely do that. Uh, earlier this week, actually yesterday, we released um, phase two of our skate to ski program. It's the rollerblade cross training program designed to you know help you work on both your technique and your fitness in the off season. Definitely encourage you to check that out if you have any interest in rollerblading or ski cross training um, or, or anything of the sort. Pretty fun. Uh, I brought Bob in, if you're familiar with Bob, which you probably are. Um, brought Bob in. He has less experience than me, so it was kind of fun to, to go through these drills from different perspectives. Um, so check that out, and, uh, and that's it. We'll, we'll move quickly on to the news now. Um, First up is a COVID-19 topic, as has been a lot of our news topics over the past couple months here, or, or 10 weeks. Um, but this is reported by the Colorado Sun, Out There, out there Colorado, and Aspen Times. Um, and these three articles share very similar information. In fact, some of them, you know, they, they include all the same information. Um, but if you're interested in, in this stuff, I would check out all three especially if you're interested in like more regional anecdotal information um, on those particular regions. Uh, but basically the, the summary of this is that the, the ski industry now has some stats on how much we've lost or how much the industry has lost from COVID-19. Um, so basically the estimation is that the industry is down about $2 billion as a whole um, as, as a result of COVID-19. Um, now there's some other supporting stats in here too. Skier visits were down a total of 14%. Um, I feel like to me that doesn't sound too bad. You know, I kind of expected that to be more, maybe even closer to the 20 to even 25% range. Um, so I think it's good that that number is not higher, that's for sure. Um, interestingly enough, if things had continued, you know, if we hadn't had the pandemic, if resorts had been able to stay open um, here in the east, we would have had a really good spring. Like no, no one would have been closing early because we had a ton of snow. Um, it would have been the fourth best season for the industry on record. They started recording that or, or recording that data um, back in the 70s. So it would have been the fourth best season since they started recording that info. Um, on average, nationwide, uh, ski area, the, the average amount of days that a ski area is open, that was down from 121 days to 99 days. Um, so on average, resorts lost about 22 days of their season. And, you know, there's plenty that lost more like 90 you know, like, or some, like, think about a, a mountain like Mammoth, um, you know, they lost, gosh, maybe even 120. Um, so interesting that the average falls about 22 days lost per resort. Um, now going into next season, basically the same organization that put this together is also saying that that total loss could in, increase to as much as $5 billion dollars. Um, but obviously that there's a ton of variables in that and it's dependent on basically what happens over the next few months, what happens going into next ski season. Um, interestingly enough, Aspen Times reported on this. Um, interestingly, Aspen or Aspen skiing company as a whole, they saw their visits down 20% compared to the national average of 14%. So, you know, that's more consistent with what I was expecting and I think probably because the way that I think about a ski resort is, is one that stays open pretty far into the spring. Um, and Aspen's certainly one that, that would have stayed open pretty long. Um, so they lost a more significant percentage of, of their overall skier traffic than some other resorts. 
And last piece of information that I'll leave you with is that overall there were uh, 51.1 million skier visits in the United States this season, um, which is interesting. Um, next up, we have some tensions between the U.S. ski team and NCAA collegiate racing. Um, this was reported on by SkiRacing.com. Thanks, SkiRacing.com. You guys are doing a great job. We've shared a lot of your information recently, um, so keep it up and thank you. Um, basically, this started with a scheduling disagreement over conflicting NORAM races and NCAA races, um, and it, it's kind of grown into more than that, um, or, or at least it's, it's certainly stirred some emotions in the ski racing world. Um, and basically, the lack of coordination or cooperation between these two entities uh, ha has kind of been the status quo for a while now. Um, Tiger Shaw, who is a, a ski team, uh, you know, uh, has a position of authority in, for the U.S. ski team. Um, in, he basically, there was a, a press conference or, or a meeting uh, to to kind of work on this stuff. Um, and in that meeting, he reiterated that the goal of the U.S. ski team is achieving World Cup podiums. Um, and according to the comments that were made in that discussion, the intended structural pathway to get athletes from point X to a World Cup podium just really doesn't include NCAA. Um, now... In response to that, there has been a, a letter um, written by Tiger, signed by Tiger Shaw, Jesse Hunt, and Chip Knight, um, which is kind of an, an attempt or, or a way of, of kind of pulling back those comments and saying, no, 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 like here are some examples of how, how collegiate racing and NORAM racing have worked together, um, but it's pretty interesting. And something, I think the, the general issue among the ski racing community and especially those who are kind of on the collegiate side of things and don't feel like things have been fair is that the, the ski team, the U.S. ski team has for years now said that if a collegiate athlete gets to the level where they can compete at, you know, on the World Cup level, they will earn a spot to do so. The problem is the U.S. ski team isn't necessarily facilitating that or helping make that happen. Um, so pretty interesting. It's a pretty long article. I just skimmed through it with that summary. Um, so if you're a fan of ski racing or, or if you're just interested in this stuff, I would definitely encourage you to go read it um, and read through the, the response letter as well. Um, next up, this was reported by Vale Daily. Uh, Aspen Skiing Company has cut ties with Liftopia. Um, Liftopia is basically a organization, uh, a, a website more than anything else, where you can buy discounted lift tickets. Um, and they've cut ties with that company over a $2.4 million debt from Mountain Collective sales, uh, which is pretty significant. Um, and basically, there has been a... There, there's ongoing uh, ongoing legal process attempting to force Liftopia into Chapter 11 bankru bankruptcy. Um, Altera, uh, Cypress Bowl Recreation, and also the company that owns A Basin, they also joined in on that, making the total debt from Liftopia around $3 million. Um, obviously, most of that is owed to Aspen Skiing Company, but pretty interesting. You know, never, never like great to hear about this stuff. Um, not good for the industry, clearly not good for a company like Aspen Skiing Company, um, especially considering everything else that's going on, considering that these companies are not in a ideal financial situation right now to begin with, to have a, a big, uh, a big, big number like that on your accounts receivable uh, is, is not ideal. Um, and it doesn't sound like they're going to get it anytime soon, although we'll have to, this is definitely one to watch. Um, so far, there hasn't been a response from Liftopia, which is, I'm sure, not tremendously surprising. Um, next up, this is uh, kind of back to COVID-19 related topics. Um, this was reported by parkrecord.com. 
So Deer Valley has kind of started analyzing next season and they are already seeing increased demand. They're calling it pent up demand for the upcoming ski season. Um, they've already begun taking lodging reservations and the majority of those are coming from California, New York, Texas, Colorado, and Utah. Um, pretty interesting. I mean, clearly, I think that's a positive, certainly a positive, and I don't think that's surprising to anybody that there's a big demand for skiing out there. You know, it, it's just simple supply and demand economics. There, we had a drastically shorted supply of skiing, which just it, it, that just obviously that's going to increase demand or, or there's going to be more demand for a product that you can't get. Um, so it's pretty interesting and, and they're really, you know, they're really going to have to work a lot and figure out how to manage that demand, um, which is true for every ski area in the, in the country, um, especially like a tourist based destination like Deer Valley. And <clears throat> In this, in this report, um, they, they had some, some quotes from Deer Valley executives and they're basically saying things like it wouldn't be sustainable for them to have a revised business model that relied on regional crowds or driving only traffic. And like, yeah, no kidding. Like, of course Deer Valley can't exist just on regional traffic. That's, I don't think that's surprising to anyone. It's certainly not surprising to me, considering the level of Deer Valley advertising and the market that they're going after. You can't replace a, a premium market like that with just local driving traffic. It's just not going to happen. Um, so that's going to be really interesting. I mean, obviously, stuff like this is going to be happening all throughout the summer and the fall as we go into next ski season. Um, but it's just going to be, it's fun to kind of look at one particular example of that and you can get a little bit better, better picture of what's going on instead of looking at the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> so that's it for general news topics. And then lastly, we have our edits of the week. <clears throat> this is a, first one is like a 17 or 18 minute long. I can't remember exactly, but <clears throat> kind of a short ski film. Uh, it was filmed and edited by a gentleman named Ryder Schwartz. It's called Before the End of the World. Um, it's a good little ski film. You know, they, they list the athletes in this. If you go to this video on YouTube, you can see all the athletes listed. There aren't, like, very many big names. You know, you may, there may be a couple names that jumped out at you. There were a couple that I noticed and recognized. Um, but despite there not being, like, a crazy cast of super pro skiers, uh, it's got a, it's 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 a really good film. It's got a really good vibe. There's some good skiing in it, um, and it's just fun to kind of sit back and watch a ski film like that. Um, next up from the Daily Pow, that's their name of their YouTube channel. Uh, they went and skied the suicide shoot in Utah, uh, which looked actually like a lot of fun. You know, it definitely wasn't ideal snow conditions. Looked like pretty dirty snow. Um, but they had pretty good coverage and, and a pretty long pitch or a long vertical, uh, pretty, pretty good vertical elevation for them to ski. And then for comparison, we put in an edit of June skiing from Jay Peak. So you can kind of get a sense of the difference between uh, what June skiing looks like in Utah compared to June skiing here in Vermont. Um, and I can almost guarantee that no one is skiing anymore in northern Vermont at least. I know there's a patch of snow still on Superstar down, I think I'm pointing in the right direction, Killington, down at Killington, uh, which is quite a few miles south of us. Um, but they've got a little patch of snow. I don't think there's anything left on Mount Mansfield here in Stowe. If there is, it's just unskiable. Um, so unfortunately, ski season is kind of officially over here in Vermont, at least here in northern Vermont. Uh, and then our last edit of the week is not ski related, but it's pretty cool. It comes from Santa Cruz, the bike company. Um, and it's basically like a, a really professionally done video of somebody riding a little mini bike with their hand, uh, kind of like tech deck style, if you're familiar with tech deck skateboards, uh, but really well done. I like edits like this. And I feel like it's something that we're seeing more and more of with, you know, with, with recent restriction, with restrictions, people at home more. Um, so it's fun to fun to see people get creative. Uh, so that's it. Thanks for joining the 10th episode of Top 5 Fridays. 
Um, I'm hoping we can bring in some special guests soon uh, as, as restrictions are lifted here in Vermont and we can bring more people into our building and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to try and try and get some industry people to sit with me through this. Uh, certainly some of my coworkers, stuff like that. So let me know if there's anybody in particular or a type of person that you'd like to see, you know, kind of providing color commentary over there, put a couple of people on a couch, uh, all sorts of stuff we could do. So hope everyone's enjoying the warm summer weather, at least here in New England. Uh, I guess a couple days until actual official summer starts, but yeah, hope everyone's getting outside and staying happy and healthy and active. Thanks.